topic from the book of Kings, so I want to want us to take our Bibles and we'll turn to First Kings. First Kings, take your Bible and we'll turn to First Kings, chapter six. First Kings, chapter six. chapter 6, and we are going to read verses 12 to 14. When you go home, you can read the entire story, but you will read verses 12 to 14. First Kings chapter 6, verses 12 to 14. It says, concerning this house, which thou art in building. If thou wilt walk in my statue yes. and execute my judgment and keep all my commandments to walk in them, mm -hmm. then will I perform my words with thee, which I spoke unto David thy father. Yes. And I will dwell among the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. So Solomon built the house and finished it. Solomon built the house and finished it. Uh, looking at the topic, building this house. Building this house. Uh, 
I stand before you in this sacred place of preaching as it were between these consecrated walls which have been a witness of worship for several months. I am aware of the legacy which sustain the presence which surround me and the future which beckons me. God be praised for this field planted by a preacher. One planted, the Bible says, in the other water. And today, God still yields the increase. God be praised for the hills and the valleys you have come through. This gives meaning to our singing, our song that says, Through many dangers, toil and snares, I have already come. Yes. It's grace that brought me safe thus far. And grace. and grace will lead you home. Permit me, ladies and gentlemen, permit me then to call upon your patience as I want to share a word with you concerning this house. More particular, I want to have a word with Solomon. I want to share a moment in conversation with a man who is experienced in the business of building a church for the Lord. If you don't mind, I thought it might be helpful to exchange ideas and insight with someone who knows what it is to mount a challenge of creative construction. Hmm. I really thought it would be to our advantage to review this matter of church building with a man who have already lifted up the ground and an edifice for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I want to have a word with Solomon. Solomon, as you know, reign over the kingdom of Israel from 931 B.C. to 910 B.C. Solomon, the second son of David, he knew what it was to sit on a pinnacle. A pinnacle he knew how to sit on. He reigned as a royal prince. That was Solomon came to power in the tender years of his youth. It was Nathan, the prophet, yes. saw in Solomon a symbol of eternal forgiveness and gave Solomon an additional name. He called him Judadia, which means the love of God. You would recall that Solomon was known for his wisdom. Hmm? Yes, sir. It is said that Solomon was the composer of 3,000 proverbs and 1,000 songs. Hmm. Solomon was skilled in matters of governmental and military administration. And in the arena of international diplomacy and trade, Solomon had no man. But that's not why I want to have a dialogue with Solomon. I want to look to Solomon because I thought 
that we might do well to have an understanding of Solomon's wisdom. Solomon made his way to Gibeon and he spoke to God and God asked him, what do you want, Solomon? What can I do for you? Solomon replied, give me an understanding heart that I may discern between good and evil. Perhaps I ought to say at this outset that you cannot build a house or a church for God unless you have an understanding heart. You cannot build a house for God unless yes. you have an understanding heart. Yes, sir. I know Solomon had a hard time because he had to deal with the same folks that Moses tried to lead out of the promised land. These were the church members Moses had standing at the brink of the Red Sea <clears throat> with freedom in the grasp and liberation in the sight. These were the same folks that told Moses we should have died back in Egypt. We were doing all right today by the flesh part of Pharaoh. Back in Egypt we had bread. Back in Egypt we had <laughs> a balanced uh, budget. Back in Egypt, we had full employment. Everyone was a slave in Egypt. Hmm. So let's go back to Egypt. These were the same folks hey, with whom Solomon had to build a temple. And that's why I want to have a word with Solomon. Hmm. I just uh, it just concerns me. It interests me as to why Solomon would build a temple in the first place. Are you there with me? Hello? Yes, sir. Why would Solomon build a temple in the first place? He did not have the resources to build. He had 30,000 men to import stones from Phoenicia. He had to import cedar from Lebanon. He ran out of money and had to take out a second mortgage. Um, he had to trade wheat and oil to get gold from Hymer. He needed 8,000 men to build the temple. He took seven years to complete the temple. I don't know why, folks. I don't know why he took the risk to build a temple in the first place. And that is why I think we need to talk to Solomon. No doubt, Solomon built because he was concerned about the church. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Without the church, hey, no one would know what God taught about Israel. Without a church or without a temple, they would not honor the God of whom they were created, the God of their fathers. Without a temple, there would be no gathering place where the saints of God could praise and pray. <coughs> Solomon Church was concerned about the church. Yes, sir. <coughs> That leads me to say that we ought to be concerned about the church. Yes, uh -huh. yes. I am concerned that unless the church, <coughs> me. unless the church is moving to a new heights, <coughs> the creation 
or the, 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 the creature will lose touch with the creator. I am concerned that <coughs> excuse me. I am concerned that if our persuasion is only to live in the present, we shall be no more than curators of ecclesiastical antique shops. I am concerned about the church, ladies and gentlemen. The church must always be responsive to the age in which we are living. Like Solomon, I am concerned about the church. Without the church, without the church, where? Without the church, where is the place for encounter between you and God? Without the church, uh, where is the place where soul shaping ground can take place? Without the church, what shall our children know as their father's praying ground? Without the church, where shall we touch the garments of the Savior. Because of the church, I can say today, a day in the courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. So I want to talk with Solomon. I want us to talk with Solomon because he may have some instructive insight on building a house for God. Yes. Now the Bible says the word of the Lord came to Solomon. Mm -hmm. That leads me to say that before you begin to build, you better be certain that you have a word from the Lord. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Don't come here by yourself. It's going to get lonely sometimes. Mm. Are you there with me? Yes, sir. Don't step out on your own strength. No, sir. You will get weak sometimes. Yeah. Don't get hung up on your ego. You will be hated sometimes. Yes. Don't move off because of your money. Mm. You will be broke sometimes. sometimes. Yes. Come on. If you go, you better, you better be sure that God said to you go. Yes. If you build, mm. we ought to build because God says to build. To build. Yes. The mountain sometimes mm. is high. The valley are deep. Yeah. The rivers are wide. Yes. Bridges are broken. Yes. Friends are few. Mm. Enemies <laughs> are many. <laughs> Interest is high. Yes, Money is hard to come yes, back. I heard Solomon say, you better be sure mm. you heard a word from the Lord. Yes. Yes. Oh. The Bible says, Except the Lord build, build the house. Yeah. <laughs> they labor in vain that build it. Yes, sir. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman work it, work in vain. Mm -hmm. So the book says, the Bible, the word of the Lord came to Solomon, yes. saying, concerning this house, <clears throat> which thou art in building. In other words, do you have any thought concerning, <laughs> concerning the nature of this house? I know you have your architectural design. <clears throat> I know you have your engineering uh, specification. And I know 
you have made your plans and your projection, but you ought to know something concerning this house you are about to build. Mm -hmm. And so, I hope you, are, you will not forget me today, but I have certain revelation of the Holy Spirit that I want to share with you concerning this house. Yeah. The first thing I need to tell you is that we are all, we all know that everybody will not help in building this house. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> right, let me say that again. <laughs> the first thing I want to tell you is that we all know that everybody will not help in building this house. And the reason for that is not because they are stubborn and not because they are evil, not because they are vindictive. The reason is that a whole lot of folks have bandwagon religion. They want to wait and see what happens before they commit themselves. Come on. They want to keep their opinions open. They always want to stay away from the possibility of failure. Mm. Just so they can say, I told you so. Oh God. Ah, my Lord. Mm -hmm. But when victory comes, ah. <laughs> oh. when victory comes, yeah. they be the first to say, I was with you all the time. <laughs> the second thing I need to tell you concerning building this house is that the church is a house designed as the dwelling place for God. Mm. Yeah. The church it's a house, yes, sir. the residence of the people of God. Yes. The church is a house, yes, sir. a frequent landing power for the satellite of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The church is a house. Mm -hmm. It is not a country club. Come on, come on. Yes. It is a house for those who hunger and thirst yes. for righteousness. Yes, sir. The church is a house. Yes, it is not a sanctuary for solo intellectual. Mm, come on. It is the house where all men and women are equal at the foot of the cross. Amen. Yes. 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 Rich. The church mm. is a house. It is not an exclusive club, mm. but an inclusive fellowship. Yes. The church, I say, is a hub. Yes, sir. It is not a place for sanctimonious <laughs> sewing circles and a socializing club or a tea party club. Mm. The church, ladies and gentlemen, yes, is a hospital for the sick. Yes. A seven ground for sinners yes. and a lighthouse for the lost. The church is a house. Amen. Yes. Yes, sir. And when this new meeting place is built, yes. it must be as an aid to worship and not the object of worship. Yes. Let me say Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. When this church is built, oh. It must not be an aid, sorry, it must be as an aid to worship and not the object of worship. Yes. The bricks and the mortar are an aid to worship, not the object of worship. The choir is an aid to worship. Not the, not the object no, of worship. Come on. 
The preacher yes. is a leader of worship yes. and not the object of worship. Yes. The Bible is a guide to worship, yes. but it is not the object of worship. God alone. Yes. God alone yes. is to be worshipped yes. here. Yes, sir. Not the place. Not the structure, no, not the stones, not the name, not the history, not the heritage, no, not the land. God alone is worthy yes. to be praised. Amen. The church Amen. is a house. Amen. It is the house of God. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. And so, we're talking to Solomon. The first thing you must do is to walk in his statutes. That's in God's statutes. <clears throat> now, to walk in the statute means you must be willing to be governed by God's law. You must be willing to be disciplined by God's law. You cannot build God's house where there is no discipline. That's right. Hello. Come on. In fact, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul told the church in Corinth that all things must be done decently ah. and in order. Yes. God has some laws. Yes. Sir. God has some standards of conduct. Yes. God has some dictates of discipline. Yes. God has some ordinances of order. You want to know what God's statue is? Ask Brother Michael. Hmm. Hmm? Michael 6 8. What does it say? He says, He had shown me, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of thee? <coughs> but to do justice. To love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Yes. <coughs> God has some statutes that we got to follow. Mm -hmm. Not only must you walk in his statute, but God told Solomon, mm -hmm. <coughs> You have to execute my judgment. Yes. We don't like the word judgment. Hello. But I'm persuaded by the Holy Spirit that God has a word of judgment for his church. True. <clears throat> now, just because, <clears throat> just because you look pious, there is a word of judgment. Mm -hmm. Never mind how right and righteous you have convinced your little friends around you. There is a word of judgment. You make no difference how important you look in your uniform or in your dress or how <clears throat> You look, you know, in your, there is a word of judgment. Yes. You know, Jesus went down to the same church or temple that Solomon once built, and he found some money changers. They were robbing the poor and stealing from the blind. And Jesus told them, you, you forgot this is a house? Come on. And it is my father's house. Yes. It is my house. And my house shall be called <clears throat> a house of prayer. Yes. But you have made it a den of thieves. Mm -hmm. My Lord. If, ladies and gentlemen, if we are going to stay away <clears throat> from judgment of God, there had better be some praying house. Yes. <clears throat> the church ought to be a seven day praying house of God. 
excuse me, every organization in the church ought to be a praying organization. The deacons who pick up the tithes, they got to be praying deacons. <clears throat> Ushers ought not to come to the floor until they have a prayer meeting. Come on. <laughs> The choir shall not even sing before they have prayer meeting. Come on. Deacons are not to be deacons until they learn the work of prayer meeting. Yes. The Holy Ghost, ladies and gentlemen, yes. won't come till we have prayer meeting. Yes. You ought to build God's house, and you cannot build God's house without prayer. Amen. Amen. In fact, unless the church is a praying church, we stand under the judgment of God. <clears throat> Christian friends, you have heard the word yeah. of Solomon. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you still want to know what the commandment of Jesus is? Jesus told his disciples one day, a new commandment I give you. <clears throat> and that new commandment is that to love one another yeah. as I have loved you. By this shall men know that you are my disciples if you love one another. You cannot build a church mm -hmm. where there is no love. True. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> you cannot build a church <clears throat> where there is no love. No. Paul says, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, yes. and have not charity, mm -hmm. I have become a song in brass and a timid singer. <clears throat> the Bible says, in the end, Solomon built the house and he finished it. He did not just start it, he finished it. He did not just break ground for it, he finished it. He did not just talk about it, he finished it. I tell you tonight, church, let's finish it. Yeah. Nehemiah <clears throat> on the wall, don't come down, let's finish it. <clears throat> Whatever you start, if God is in it, then finish it. Yeah. Tonight, you have heard the words of Solomon. Yeah. In order for you to build the house of God, you've got to make sure you have a word from the Lord. Yes. You've got to be a praying church. You've got to be a loving church. <clears throat> You got to remember that this church yeah. is the house of God. Amen. Amen. My admonition to you, my admonition to you, mm -hmm. is to always put God first. Mm -hmm. Always rely on Him. Yeah. It's His house, yeah. and if it's His house, then He will finish it. Yes. May God bless you. Yeah. May God continue to lead you. Yeah. May God continue to guide you as you labor in his vineyard day by day. Praise God one more time. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed we hear from the man of God. Yeah. Amen? Amen? What a powerful word yeah. building the house of God yes. from uh, Pastor Kenneth Jones. Yes. And you have given us enough yes. for us to go with. And in order for God to work in us, building that love, yes. building that relationship, yes. we got to give our all to him. Thank you for allowing us to talk with Solomon. And for 
Solomon, our big brother, has responded to us. If God is not building our house, we are laboring in vain. And in building the house, let the object be God. Let it be a house yeah. of prayer. And so we thank you, Pastor Jones, for allowing us to be drawn closer to God. And we will follow in the footsteps that he has guided by standing and lifting up the name of Jesus in prayer with the use of the song Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Make our hearts a dwelling place for God. Build that place in our heart so that God can be the object and the subject of worship. Lord, prepare me. Shall we stand? Tune your mind from every taste and focus on God.
Praise God. Praise God. Thank you so much. God praise On the behalf of Advent Gospel Ministries, we would like to thank Pastor Kenneth Jones for an outstanding message. May God continue to bless you.